sir. Well, hey there you awesome bipeds, quadrupeds, and even the occasional dinosaurs. It is I, Little Wolf, and welcome to my den. Go ahead and come on in, but please wipe your paws before entering, and go ahead and take a seat by the fire. The cauldron is bubbling so you can have your choice of tea, coffee, or hot chocolate. Alright, so it is Monday, and I know it's been about a month since we've done this, so I'm going to make this kind of an extra long one, just to make it a little bit more special, for making a comeback of these vintage cartoons revisited, which I know helps a lot of people out there get through their week and start it off okay. So I really hope that we can get back into that and really show these old cartoons some love because that's what they need and I know it helps you so let's go ahead and jump into these but before we do that if you ever feel like you need any help and you can't talk to any of your friends or family if you're in the United States you can always call the US suicide hotline number which is 988 and they also have a 1-800 number, which is 1-800-273-8255. And you can call that and they'll get you in touch with different people you can talk to and set you up with appointments if you need that. And they can help you out that way. But still, the easiest and quickest way would be to dial 988. And now... If you're outside the U.S., which is pretty much everybody else out there, you can always hit up the Blogspot area, which is blog.opencounseling.com backslash suicide hyphen hotlines backslash. And that will give you a list of all the other countries out there and websites and numbers that you can get a hold of if you ever feel like you need it. And I really hope that you do give those numbers and websites a look at if you need help. And let's go ahead and jump into our first synopsis of the cartoon that we're going to look at. And I remember watching this one a lot when I was a little pup. And it's called Gerald McBoing Boy. And it's from 1950. And it's also an award-winning cartoon. And it says here, at the age of two, Gerald McLoyd should be at the age where he's saying his first words. But when the first words come out of his mouth sound more like a broken spring, boing, boing, his nervous father is worried that Gerald will never speak properly and keep making these unusual sounds. After his father calls in medical help, Gerald continues making these and other unusual sounds as the doctor doesn't know what to do. And later, when Gerald's father sends him to school, hoping that being around other children speaking and having teachers who can teach him will help him to speak properly. Gerald can only make these sounds. Is there any hope for Gerald or his exasperated parents? And some of the things that this leaves out in the synopsis is, yes, the parents do get exasperated and they do call in a doctor, and Gerald makes these weird noises as he's getting checked out. And yes, he does get sent to school, and it's very quickly sent back home with a note from the teacher saying he makes different noises instead of all of these other ones, instead of saying words. And so they just have to send him home. And later on, Gerald is very, like, sad and decides he's going to run away from home. And then as he's out by a train yard, I think, he runs into, like, a radio producer who says that he had heard about him making these weird noises and thought he could use him in his radio show. So, let's go ahead and jump into this cartoon and see what happens with Gerald. McMorning Boy. Oh, McLoyd. <laughs> 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 
I'm sorry, but let's jump in here and see what happens. This is the story of Gerald McCloy and the strange thing that happened to that little boy. They say it all started when Gerald was two. That's the age kids start talking. At least most of them do. Well, when he started talking, you know what he said? He didn't talk words. He went... Instead... What's that? cried his father, his face turning gray. That's a very odd thing for a young boy to say. And poor Gerald's father rushed to the phone and quick dialed the number of Dr. Malone. Come over fast, the poor father pled. Our boy can't speak words. He goes boing, boing instead. said the doctor. It's just as you said. He doesn't speak words. He goes boing, 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 instead. I have no cure for this. I can't handle the case. And he packed up his pills and walked out of the place. <laughs> then months passed, and Jero got louder and louder, till one day he went... <laughs> like a big keg of powder. It was then that his father said, This is enough! He'll drive us both mad with this terrible stuff! A boy of his age shouldn't sound like a fool! He's got to learn words! We must send him to school! <laughs> From public school seven to Mrs. McCloy, your little son Gerald's a most hopeless boy. We cannot accept him, for we have a rule that pupils must not go in our school. Your boy will go all his life, I'm afraid. Sincerely yours, Fanny Schultz, teacher, first grade. But as little Gerald grew older, he found when a fella goes, no one wants him around. When a fella goes, he can't have any pals. And his fighting the gals. Nya-nya! They all shouted. Your name's not McCloy, you're Gerald McCloy, going the noise-making boy!
Gerald McCoin Boing that I do make sweeps? A boy, I have searched for you many long weeks. I can make you the most famous lad in the nation, for I own a radio station. I need a smart fellow to make all the sounds who can bark like a dog <coughs> and bay like the hounds. <coughs> your gong is terrific. Your toot is inspired. <coughs> come to... But boing, boing, you're hired. The Dalton gang stuck up the stagecoach at noon, and the varmints are holed up in fancy saloon. A sheriff can't get at him. Not even the law knows how to beat 23 men to the draw. Now hold on there, partner. One fella knows how. It's Silent Sam Steelheart, and here he comes now. <laughs> Now, that was definitely one of my favorite cartoons growing up, and I was always excited each time I saw it come on Looney Tunes whenever I was at my grandparents' house. And here's another one that we're going to jump into where I know these cartoons were pretty big when I was kind of growing up. I kind of remember watching some of them, but not really. And it also is the doll that inspired the Annabelle movies, if you know those ones. And it's a Raggedy Ann cartoon, and it's from 1944. And it's called Suddenly It's Spring. And in this one, Raggedy Ann and the toys that belong to this little girl is sick. And the little girl gets visited by a doctor, and the doctor says, you know, the only thing that can really help her is going to be sunlight. And where they are at the moment, it's winter, and it's really cloudy, so they're not really sure what to do. So Raggedy Ann decides, you know, I'm going to go up and I'm going to go talk to the sun and see what the sun says. And I'm going to plead with the sun to, you know, shine down because my little girl needs the sunlight and uh, we need that to get her to feel better. But the sun says, no, I can't do anything about it because the cloud is in the way, Mr. Cloud. And so Raggedy Ann goes down and sees Mr. Cloud and it's... Uh, pretty obvious what they're trying to make Mr. Cloud be. Um, yeah, we'll kind of let that slip under the rug because of the year it was, but yeah. Um, she, she asked the clouds, you know, can you please move out of the way so Mr. Sun can shine down on my little girl and she can get better? But Mr. Cloud's like, no, nah, I can't do anything for you because the wind has to come in and uh, they have to blow me away. Otherwise, I can't go anywhere on me own. I'm just going to sit here by myself. And so Raggedy Ann asks how you go see the breeze. And the breeze is just everywhere. So the breeze goes down and talks. And the breeze says, no, I can't really do anything because... Uh, Mr. Zero has to be talked to, and Mr. Zero apparently is the one that is in charge of winter, and so Raggedy Ann goes and talks to him, and how about we jump into the cartoon and see what happens in Raggedy Ann, and suddenly, it's spring.
sorry. There's not much more that I can do for Nancy. Doctor, that doesn't mean that... No. But the best doctor in the world for her right now would be the sun. I didn't expect to see you till spring. Well, this is sort of an unexpected trip. You see, my friend here, Raggedy Ann, has something of extreme importance she wants to talk to you about. Why, I'd be glad to speak to her. Well, Raggedy Ann, what can I do for you this bright, sunny day? But it isn't a bright, sunny day down where we are. And I'm afraid something awful will happen to our Nancy. They say that you are the greatest doctor in the world. And I'm sure if you'll just see her, she'll get well. Please, Mr. Sun. Well, this is uh, rather embarrassing. Uh, you see, at this time of the year, the sun doesn't even shine bright in my old Kentucky home. That is, unless Cloudy moves out of the way and lets me peek through. Sometimes I get burned up about it myself. Wouldn't Mr. Cloud let you see our Nancy for just a little while? I'm sure if you ask him that way, he couldn't refuse. Now, if you'll just slide down this sunbeam, you'll find him on yonder cloud bank. Thanks awfully, Mr. Sun. clouds while snow is still around. Zero, not me, is the one to see. When he melts snow, then I can blow. Zero. That old icicle hangs on till the last day of winter. I must see Mr. Zero. I'm blowing his way. Glad to fly you there. Sit tight, Raggedy Ann. Take care.
Snow melt. Snow melt? Preposterous. Absolutely unheard of. Why, Our Nancy is dreadfully sick. If Mr. Breeze can blow Mr. Cloud out of the way, Mr. Sun can look down on our Nancy and make her well again. And just what has all this to do with me? Why, Breezy isn't allowed to blow till you melt all the snow. Melt all the snow? I still have two weeks to go. Have you no respect for tradition? Couldn't you make an exception just this once? Oh, why, uh, 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 that's ridiculous. But Mr. Zero... But nothing. That's final. we've gone through that one and it's kind of obvious now I'm actually gonna start watching some of these cartoons so I can actually give a better synopsis of what goes on besides what is written on the words that I find in different synopsises and usually I find a lot of them on IMDB or I find some of them through different uh, cartoon catalogs where they have the synopsises there. And let's go ahead and jump into this one from 1951. And it stars Baby Huey. And if you guys remember Baby Huey, he's a big, like, really big baby. And people think that he's just dumb and he actually is really strong and helpful. And in this one, he starts off, he's eating food and you see a 
big stack of bowls next to him that are all empty because he's just eating non-stop and he's like mama I'm still hungry and mommy comes over and she's like yeah I don't know where you're putting it all and Huey looks out the window and he sees a bunch of his friends running out and they're wearing all these little scout uniforms and they put up a sign that says the scouts and Huey wants to join up so he jumps out of his uh, chair runs through the door well the bottom part of the door is open the top part shut and he just runs through and he wants to go join his friends and be a scout and he asks them what he has to do to do that and they tell him you know you have to go fill up this pail and the pail has a bunch of holes in it so it's not going to be able to fill up and so they send him to go off to go fill that up and they're kind of laughing in their little TP tent type thing while Huey's trying to get it filled up and as he's away trying to fill up the water and they're laughing at him in their little tent a fox suddenly comes by and sees all of the little birds and suddenly decides this would be a great dinner and so he scares off the other birds and while he tries to get Huey um, he first realizes that Huey wants to join the scouts and he pretends to be a scout master and decides to do all of these different weird things to try and cook Huey and it has kind of weird wily coyote type effects on it and everything else and in the end uh, the fox gets outsmarted or like out dimwitted, I guess, by Huey, because Huey's not exactly that smart. We know that. So how about we jump into this and find out what happens in Baby Huey, Scout Fellow. <laughs> Hey, Ma! I'm still hungry! Baby Huey, I simply don't know where you put it all. Okay, Scout, set up the tent. Hey, Jimmy, where's the club? Boy, this is a swell spot for our headquarters. This is gonna be some fun! <laughs> Goodbye, Ma! I'm going to play with the Cub Scout. I'm going to be a Cub Scout. I'm going to be a Cub Scout. I'm going to be a Cub Scout. Oh, my gosh. Here comes that dopey Huey again. Uh, that monstrosity will ruin everything. Come on, fellas. <laughs> You gotta do a good deed. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, 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 what's a good deed? Well, fetching a full pail of water for the camp would be a good deed. Yeah, sure, give me it. I'll do a good deed. I'm gonna be a Cub Scout. I'm gonna be a Cub Scout. I'm gonna be a Cub Scout. <laughs> Scout. 
<laughs> now I'll never be a cub scout. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goody! A scout master! Oh, uh, I wish so much to be a Cub Scout. Eh, uh, well, uh... All right, Buster. But first, you gotta pass a life-saving test. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy! Now, when saving a drowning man, always wait till he goes down for the third time. Get it? Yeah, yeah. I got it. Now, pretend you're drowning, and I'll save you. Uh, here I go! Oh, now with some duck soup. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> That's three. Now you gotta save me. Help! Help! Oh! That's a scout master! Help! Save me! One... I can't swim! Two... Help! Three! I saved you! Now can I be a cop scout? Hmm, huh? Can I be, huh? No, not yet! You still have to pass the tracking test. Now follow my footprints and track me down. Yeah, yeah. Track it down. Track it down. Okay, okay. Uh, hey, where are you, Mr. Scoutmaster? Oh, boy, that dumb dumb squeeze is cooked. I wonder where he went. There, I packed it down. Now can I be a cup scout? Can I? Can I? No, not yet. I still have to pass my cooking test. If these uh, hot dogs don't kill that duck, dynamite. <laughs> It's the fox. Hey, what's he gonna do with that dynamite? Okay, Buster. To pass the cooking test, you gotta roast these weenies. Oh boy, we're gonna eat hot dogs. We're gonna eat hot dogs. That's the end of poor Huey. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I call that idiot a moron. Hey, it's the scoutmaster. Are uh, these hot dogs done yet? Come down, Huey. Your first duty as a member of the Fox Patrol is to raise the colors. Uh, all right, sir. Okay, now this is going to be our last cartoon, and sadly, I'm sorry to say that there are no Betty Boops in this set of cartoons, and for some weird reason I was having a hard time getting into archive.org to find cartoons, and that's usually where I find a lot of them. And this time I was able to find a bunch of them through Kids Activity, which is kind of interesting, but they had a bunch of the cartoons, and I figured, hey, this will be another little spot if I have archive go down or any of the other public domain cartoon sites to go down that I try and use. And this one here is from 1954 and it's called Herman and Catnip Ship Ahui. Now it says under Captain Herman work for the mouse sailor is more like play but the fun ends when they bring aboard a castaway who turns out to be Catnip the pirate. And, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you have the kind of Tom and Jerry dynamic, but I think this is before Tom and Jerry. Or it might be during. I might have to look that up and maybe correct myself. I'm not sure if I will, though. But you definitely have a Tom and Jerry aspect. 
And Herman the Mouse, of course, is the one that's trying to save the ship from the pirate. And so many weird things happen here. At one point, the cat gets flattened and folded into a paper airplane and thrown into the air. So yeah, this is going to definitely fit into the category of crazy cartoons that I always follow in the umbrella-ness of my channel, of just having weird cartoons. So yeah, a lot of the, good lord, it just seems like the 40s, 50s, 60s just all had weird cartoons. And even before then, the 30s, 40s, good lord, they just get... How did we go from all of these weird zany cartoons to having, like, the kind of... Wait, no, we really never did have too many calm cartoons, did we? Good lord, now that I think about it. But let's go ahead and jump into 1954 and see what happens with Herman and Pirate Catnip. Now I am the skipper who's running the ship. He, ho, blow the mice down. I'm bidding chipper. I'll take me a trip. Ho, 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 and blow the mice down.
Sadly, with that last cartoon out of the way, our time in the den is gonna be coming to an end. I hope you did enjoy me finding these weird cartoons, and they definitely fall into, fall into my usual categories of vintage cartoons that are just crazy and zany, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, it was definitely tricky to hunt these ones down this time, and it was definitely fun to watch them, and it's going to be fun to watch them with you here in the den. I really, really love hunting all these cartoons down. And I really love sharing them with you. And I really hope they help you get through your Monday and get through your day easier and start your week better. Oh my gosh, it's just getting so much more fun to hunt these down and look at all these old cartoons. And we're also going to be having a bit more fun because if you remember from... Let's see here, what was it? Wednesday, we had the sci-fi revisited, and that was with Tales of Tomorrow, and we have a bunch of episodes we can go through with that. And I'm thinking with this one, we're going to visit one with the Shat. And they did have a few of them with him in there, but I've only watched this one so far. And he finds Earth to be too cold. And that's all I'm going to say about it. And so you're going to have to join me on Wednesday when we jump into Tales of Tomorrow and find out why the Shat is freezing. So, I hope you join me then. And when you go out, I hope you do continue to mask up, even though we really don't do that too much anymore that I'm seeing. So, you know, just do it to try and make yourself stay a little bit healthier and keep your family safer. And if you haven't done it yet, go out and get your vaccinations and your booster shots. It'll keep you and your family healthier, and it'll definitely uh, just make it that much better down the future for you. And if you can, uh, they still really don't do it anymore wherever I go and I see all the shopping being done. Nobody does social distancing that much anymore and it really gets my anxiety up. Not really much about any, like, contagious things. I just don't like large groups of people. They're, they just freak me out. But, you know, do all of this and you can keep you and your family safer. And we also have one here in the den, oh, right there, that we have to protect. So, hashtag protect the lioness. And if we protect the lioness, you're protecting your family and those around you, and that's all we can really hope for. So, I love all you bipeds, quadrupeds, and even the occasional dinosaurs so much. So, hopefully join me Wednesday for another out of this world adventure. I love all of you so much. Until next time, Wolf out. Sir? Sir?